This day is a triumphant day. This day is a day of victory, triumph, acclamation, and glory. This is the culmination of three years of a testimony of Jesus to his very identity. That he had come into the world to save mankind from their sin. The fall of Adam. The sin of pride sin of not believing God, the sin of somehow being jealous of God and thinking that they would have the power if they only listened to Satan. This fall of man brought in death, certain death. What is death? Death that is free of everlasting life. The dead be dead. Everlasting life is the life that restores, that brings Adam back to his state of existence before the fall. This is the culmination of Jesus' ministry that he is here after having traversed the entire countryside, working signs and wonders, teaching words of wisdom that he had been inspiring so many of Young, old, men and women, children, to follow him, to believe. And when they saw him raise Lazarus from the tomb, they said, surely this is the Son of God. Surely this is the Son of David. This is the rightful heir to the throne of David. Hosanna to the King of the Jews. The people cried out. If you read in scripture, it was the people who cried out to God, Oh God, send us a king. They had no king before. They had judges. But they had no king. What do you need a king for? So that they can set us in proper, to judge between us and to make decrees so we can obey. So we can put ourselves in slavery. <coughs> I said, you do not need a king, but since you all, all you people are asking me for a king, I will anoint a king for you. And my servant Samuel will designate, a designated Saul. He anointed Saul as a king over the Jews. And from that time until they were conquered, they had a king, and they were praying for another king. King David came, and he ruled. King Solomon came, and he ruled. And then there was a conquering, because the world had fallen back into sin. The Jews were in exile, slaves, again. And after some 400 years, they were able to come back out of slavery and inherit the land. Well, they did it again. And the king that they had was not the anointed king, was not anointed. The prophecy was that the son of David would be the king. And he would come from the city of David. And that he would be the Messiah, the teacher of righteousness, the great conqueror, the great high priest. The great high priest is the one who offers sacrifice at the altar that is pleasing to God the Father. The teacher of righteousness is the one who is the teacher of what God wants to refresh our lives beyond the law. It's not just obedience to the law. It's the heart of the law, the spirit of the Lord, of the law, which is to love your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And to love your neighbor as yourself. We want 
to great pains to describe who is our neighbor. Went to great pains to say, I desire mercy more than sacrifice. In other words, if you could go to the temple, you could pay money to the money changers, change your denarii into, into uh, shekels, and you could purchase an animal, or you could purchase some grain, and you could have it sacrificed on the altar, and that somehow would make atonement for the sin, which it did not. And so, because the spirit of the law had been violated, the spirit of the law is to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, to love your neighbor as yourself. And I desire mercy more than sacrifice. Mercy more than sacrifice. <clears throat> Don't go to the temple and pay money to have some sheep slaughtered, thrown on the fire. <clears throat> Show mercy to one another. I desire mercy more than sacrifice. And you will see that Jesus, when he gets into Jerusalem, gets off that donkey, he goes in and he turns that whole money changers on their up and upside down and get out of my father's house you evil doers you do not understand the purpose the intent of the law and you're corrupted for your own monetary gain corruption to impose 432 commandments on the people is to control them, to enslave them, to make them feel guilty, to keep them in control and under your authority instead of God's. I desire mercy more than sacrifice. In other words, teach the people how to be Christians, to love one another as their self. To have compassion on the downtrodden, the sick, the oppressed, those that are going through it, have some compassion. Feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, have mercy on widows and orphans. These are the things that I <coughs> desire. And he said, This is the way in which you're going to be judged. Did you do these things? Or did you not do these things? For what you did, you did of the least of these you did for me. And what you did not do, you did not do for me either. So this day is the day of triumphal entry where the people, not the scribes, not the Pharisees, not the learned, not the government, not those in power, but the people themselves cried out, Hosanna! to the son of David, the king, the rightful king of the Jews. Incidentally, he came in through the priest's gate. The priest's gate is opened once a year. So the great high priest, a week before Passover, will come in on his parade with his entourage with the, the lamb that is to be sacrificed at Passover. It's a ritual. Well, Jesus got there first. And all the people were there with branches from palm trees saying, this is the great high priest. So the Messiah is the fulfillment of all the prophecies. He is the teacher of righteousness. He is the great conqueror. And he is the who conquers evil, is able to restore man to his rightful place before the fall. 
so that he can partake of the knowledge of good tree of knowledge of good and evil. So he can partake of the tree of everlasting life. In other words, be connected to all things through Christ. This triumphant entry is something which is inspiring for all of us. We should be able to take comfort from this, that since he is the king, the people cried out for a king. What do you need a king for? Well, we need a king that's going to save us from our enemies. All right. He anointed Saul. He anointed David. He anointed Solomon. This triumphant Jesus is the one who can go into his father's house. How do we know it's his father's house? Because when he was 12 years old, after he had bar mitzvah, where a Jew is able to speak for himself as a man, he's able to read in the synagogue. And there, when he was at the, at the temple, his parents, Mary and Joseph, were going looking for him. They found him. What are you doing? Don't you know we're looking for you? Where else would you expect to find him? But in my father's house. When he speaks of his father, he uses the familiar term for father in Aramaic, which translates to daddy. And in our church, bishops are referred to as Sedna, which is daddy. My venerable old father with the long white beard. It's a term of endearment. Because we are take the role of spiritual father very seriously. Each one is viewed not as a child but as a uh, the responsibility to raise up in the Lord. And so this is our charge. It's part of our job description. And when Jesus says, I'm in my father's house, how dare you turn it into a den of thieves? You know that he's speaking the truth. I tell you truly, not one stone will be on the top of another one when I'm done with this. I'm going to tear it down and build it up again in himself. In himself. To break down all the artificial rules, all the man-made stuff, all the three-dimensional things which are in, designed by religions to enslave their people, to control them, and to make them toe the line, usually to their own ambition. Jesus is going to break that down, not one stone on the earth. And in fact, he did. It was uh, 33 years later. Temple was destroyed. We can go there now, and there is a wall, the Wailing Wall. You've heard of it. And there are people praying on the side, on the side of the Wailing Wall in the holiest places in the world. You can feel the energy coming from it. I've been there. I said, Innocently, what's on the other side of the wall? 
walked around. And I looked on the other side of the Wailing Wall. People out there living in tents. Homeless people, poor people, people running around in rags, eating on an open fire behind the holiest shrine in the world. I tell you, who's more precious? What is more precious? Those stones or those people to the Lord? For me, Christianity is about people. Good Christianity is about not any people. What did you say? Christianity is about all people. But for me, Christianity is about you people. And if I can be successful in inspiring you to attain eternal life, and I will have been a success in my ministry. That's my gauge of it. The Lord be praised. We may have another measure, which I've not let you know. But when Jesus is here, we can cry out and acknowledge who he is. And he is the Messiah. And if you believe in him, that your sin, the sin of Adam, the sin of pride, the sin of the fall, is restored in his resurrection, that you can join with him as the branches are joined to the tree, then you can become this one who has fallen, rejoined with the tree that is filled with life. These branches have been cut off from the tree. And we will raise them and we will sing, Hosanna to the Son of David! Hosanna to the King of the Jews! Hosanna to the King of glory! Hosanna to Christ our Lord! An invitation of those people who cried out that He Even though we do deference to various governments, even though we are patriotic citizens, even though we do our duties as citizens, we acknowledge no king other than Christ the king. We don't acknowledge the king of England. We don't acknowledge the king of Rome. We don't acknowledge the king of any place. That's why the United States doesn't have a king. There's only one king, Christ, the Lord. And that's how we are. So, we'll be blessing these palms here in a moment. And you take these palms, you wave them in the air. But you take them home to your house. And if you have a cross on your wall, you place it on the cross on your wall. So that you can remember every time you pray in front of the cross. You also are acknowledging Jesus is my king. Jesus is the king of the Jews. Jesus is the king of life itself. Pay homage to him. Every time you look at your cross, you look at the, at the palm leaves. And remember, these palm leaves are cut off from the tree. But you are born. <laughs>